been restoring a 1969 VW Type 2 bus for over a year now. Um, finally got it running and driving, and this bus in 69 ended up having uh, manual brakes, which were pretty scary on the first test drive, even though I did convert it over to disc brake in the front. It's got all new drums, shoes, hardware, all that stuff in the rear. Um, just it is what it is. It's a manual brake. They're only so good. As hard as you can push on the pedal is as hard as you're going to stop. Um, the guy I'm building this bus for actually lives up on top of a mountain, and I thought that was going to be just a terrible <laughs> combination. So I uh, started looking around, and it looks like uh, 73, I believe, was the year that the Type 2 ended up getting a power brake uh, option. So um, kind of went out on a limb and said, you know what, we're just going to try to adopt the 73 power brake set up to the older 69 manual. Um, I'll show you what I did so far. Uh, it's going to work. So there are a couple things that are kind of doesn't add up on this bus. I'm pretty sure that this has the uh, beam set up and spindles off of a pre-66. So that might be something to keep into account. Um, from what I found, the um, 67 or whatever it was to 71 or 72 I-beams should have ball joints instead of kingpins. This has kingpin. And the um, the tubes are actually, I believe, a little farther apart, which would make this job a lot easier. But it is what it is. I'm not changing up the whole front suspension. We like how it sits, and I'm pretty sure that's why they ended up doing the earlier version suspension is to get it lower. So either way, um, I'll show you what I've done so far on how to mount the booster. Um, I'm not boring everybody with the fabrication of the plate and that kind of stuff. I'll just kind of show you how I did it, what parts I used. And as I progress, um, I'm pretty much down to this point, I just got to take the old master out, uh, tee the front brake lines together, put it to the new master, so some brake lines to make, and one vacuum line to run to the engine itself. I'm going to have to get a vacuum source, which will be pulling the manifold off and drilling and tapping it. So overall, it's been a pretty easy project. I got maybe half a day into it now. Um, I can mount the booster. I just wanted to get a video and some pictures of it before I actually just bolted the four nuts to it and mounted it. Um, so just a quick progress report. I am going to go through all the pieces that I used so far. It's very, very basic. Uh, the piece of steel I used, I'm wanting to say, is like a six by seven inch piece, so it doesn't take much metal at all. Uh, definitely going to need to be decent at welding. It is kind of one of those components that you don't want to have a weld break. So uh, if you're comfortable enough welding some fairly heavy gauge metal, um, it's pretty straightforward so far. So let's take a look at where I'm at currently, and I'll do a couple quick notes on what pieces parts I ended up buying, and we'll get this thing power braked. So the stock manual cylinder is very easy to access and get out. Uh, you can see where the actual um, pedal mount comes in. So all I pretty much did was took a string straight line and just made a straight mark on the axle tube itself. Um, I did take a piece of cardboard and cut out a template for the actual booster itself. I uh, used a plaz cutter to cut the center hole, worked out just fine. What I found on mine, and why I kind of think this is an older beam, is the distance in between the two. If I'd have mounted that plate directly to the tubes, I wouldn't have been able to be able to put nuts on to hold the booster on. So I ended up taking a couple pieces of thick angle, it was about an inch, and just spacing it back. That way I had room to be able to access the backside to tighten the nuts and everything up. So in the end, something like that's what you're going to end up with. Um, I'll get that booster mounted up here quick, just so you can kind of see. Uh, the two tubes up top here that control the throttle, those little guys, those metal tubes, had to uh, massage them, we'll say, out of the way, get as much clearance up as possible. This bus is lowered, and uh, tie rod clearance was definitely a concern going forward on how much room I had between this and the master. So... Yeah, it's pretty simple so far. And to make it even easier, I just took a little scrap piece of cardboard and that was basically my whole template. Very, very straightforward so far. This is the booster assembly. 
The one hard part to find is the original rod. Um, just keep in mind you will be lengthening that. Depends on if you can mount the actual uh, mounting plate to your beams or if you have to space it. You're going to be somewhere around 14 to 15 inches. Mine will be more around 15 by the time. I make sure I get plenty of thread in all the way to the eyelet of the pedal. So that's not a big deal. I ended up finding it used off of the Samba um, for like 45 bucks shipped. So that would be the one piece that you're going to need that's used. The master is different from the um, original manual just because of this piece. I'm going to confirm once I pop the other one out, but I'm pretty certain that you have to get the 73 and newer master as well. This one does have four ports, which... Well, five, I guess, if you want to be technical. Um, two of them be used for your switches. And then you'll have your front rear. This one will stay blocked off. And then, of course, our vacuum, which will be not the easiest thing to access, but also not very difficult. So those are the two main components so far. Um, I did decide to try the extra um, reservoir tube. I already have one new one. And just kind of by eyeballing it and measuring, I think I can actually union these together. Uh, that was definitely a concern on what I'm going to do for that upper reservoir to feed the lower reservoir and have some kind of hose that's actually safe for brake fluid since it's so corrosive. So with any luck, this will be the way to go because they have these really odd ends. I'm surprised it seals, but I guess there's just gravity against it anyway. So that's pretty much the, the bulk of the parts. All of the pieces that I had before are brand new, so I was able to reuse some stuff. Uh, there is, for the vacuum side, the check valve, which 15 bucks or something like that. And then I just got a couple extra seals for the plastic hose, a couple extra new ones. I didn't know that the master came with their own. Um, I'm going to try to reuse the reservoir from the original master since the, uh, the nipple for it is on the easiest side for me to connect the hose to. Uh, if this thing's grommet diameter is different, I believe the bore is the same, so you should be able to just swap the grommets over. But let me get this bolted up and get you an idea of where it's going to sit. I'll get the old master out, and that way it'll give a good string line of where the rod is actually going to locate. It looks like it's going to be dead on, so so far not horribly bad other than having to deal with some plate steel. I ended up ordering um, how was it, like an 8 by 10 inch piece? Just I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do, how long it was going to be. And it ended up being about 6 by 7. So whatever you think there. I didn't go quarter inch, that's just overkill. Um, yeah, just not, just harder to work with basically. So let me get some uh, more pictures in this thing bolted up quick. So I ended up going uh, 3 16 Like I said, I didn't go quarter because 3 16 is plenty thick. Um, and that's pretty much the chunk that I had. I wanted to have a little extra in case I needed to build some brackets, which I ended up using some uh, 90 steel on it anyways. But yeah, just for reference sake, I used about mm, six and a half, we'll just say, by six and three quarter. So if you are kind of going to do this project, something around that size would be good. And if you want, a little extra. I think this was $18 shipped off of eBay. So anyways, 3 16 is definitely thick enough. Well, I kind of knew the uh, masters were going to be different. I don't recall you know, that system. Obviously, it's for the booster. Uh, it is shorter, and to my surprise, um, yeah, that's not going to work. So you definitely need the reservoir for the 73 and up as well. And you can tell the differences on it. So put that on your list of things. I got the actual, um, I don't know if they want to call it, German spec one or whatever for like 135 bucks off J-Bugs. But, uh, yep, going to have to get one of those ordered up. I knew I was going to have a couple little things like this, but that's not going to hold me up too much on the project. I'm going to keep her rolling. Um, once I got that removed, I do have <clears throat> a little better view of everything here. The original location was brake wires, all that stuff. So kind of hard to tell, but we are pretty pretty much square lined up. I think it's gonna go off without a hitch here pretty soon. So this is what you end up with. 
Uh, the e-brake cable on the driver's side will rub. There's no way of getting around it. Um, and that is out absolutely as high up as you can get. It's basically touching the floor. So it is a little lower than the beam, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be a problem at all. That's not the lowest portion on the bus by any means anyways, so. That's pretty much what we're working with so far. And it should work out pretty slick. I pretty much completed the install on it. I ended up making a uh, my own push rod for the booster. I have a separate video if you're interested in doing that. I did find a way to use new parts in the old master. Um, so the actual linkage from the original manual setup, just the end is all I used. But this is pretty much what you'll end up with. Uh, I was able to use the two 32 inch or 33 inch, 78 to 70, I'm sorry, 68 to 71 uh, type two filler tubes and just union them together. And it actually runs perfect lengthwise to the new reservoir location. Of course, you know, finishing up the install on a Sunday, my one hose has a slight crack and I had to order another one so it's not completely pinned up in place. I went up to the actual throttle bracket for that to keep it clear of clutch pedal and steering linkage and all that stuff. So overall, pretty easy project. Um, teed the lines in together in the front. I'm gonna try to get as much as I can. And then just the rear line. You could cut it off in the back. I thought it would be a little easier just to route both of them together. I'll finish up zip tying all that stuff when we get a little farther with the project. Get it bled and everything. I did bench bleed the master cylinder on this to make it easier. I still gotta run the wires, of course, for the brake switch, but um, going through, stuck the uh, booster vacuum signal up through the frame. <clears throat> And drilled a hole through the uh, engine pan, if I can get it. That's where I mounted our little valve. And I just took the um, intake off. You can't really see anything, but I'll show you anyways. <laughs> Running dual carbs, so I ended up pulling intake, drilling it marking it from my hole that I cut, sticking a Sharpie through, you know, dotted it, tapped it, stuck that uh, 7 16 hose barb in it, and it worked out pretty slick. So short of having to send <laughs> a new hose, which those things happen, this whole thing cleared pretty darn nice. It's kind of a balance between clearing your parking brake cable and you've got your cable on the side there too. So I kind of just centered it so not one was rubbing worse than the other. But now we have hopefully a major improvement. I can't see how it's not going to be a major improvement going to a power brake setup. With any luck, this thing will be much safer to drive and much more enjoyable to drive too. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. But I think that that's pretty self-explanatory on what you need for pieces, parts. I did drill a hole through this cross member there just to get it up away from the shifter and everything. And once this is uh, in position and zip tied up out of the way, you can see the shifter rod and all that stuff will look clear. So, worked out pretty slick. Mostly all brand new components. And if you can't find this stock rod somewhere, you're gonna need to lengthen it anyways. You can use the uh, original uh, manual brake adjuster. And like I say, check out my other video on how to actually build that. It took maybe 10, 15 minutes. Anyways, thanks for watching.